Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, it's nice to pray, huh? Um, well, everybody, welcome to Christian Students on Campus Solid Ground. This is our last solid ground of the semester. Yeah, cry. Uh, um, this semester, we've been going over this topic. What's up? No, no, this, this is fine here. Um, this topic from this verse in Hebrews chapter 6. Let's go on, or, let's, or let us be brought on, be brought on to maturity. So the, there's a basic thought that the Christian life uh, is not just a matter of I'm saved. Now what? Now, now what profession do I choose? Uh, who do I marry? Uh, what charity do I support? Uh, which color do I vote? Um, the Christian life is about going on. Uh, what does that imply? That means there's a destination. There's an aim. There's a direction. Uh, we are people on this earth without, not without a goal. All right, did you catch that double negative? You use a double negative when you're speaking, when you want to make emphasis. We are a people not without a goal. So what does that mean? That means we have a goal. Okay, but sometimes you need to tell yourself when you feel aimless, like, I am not without a goal. <laughs> Uh, whatever I got on the test, however this semester went, however this situation in my life that is still unresolved is going, there's a goal and there's a direction, and I'm on it. The Lord saved me, and He called me. Now, let's go on. Let's all say that. Let's go on. I right, have the brothers say, let's go on. Let's go on. All right, sisters say, let's go on. Let's go on. This section say, let's. Let's. Go. go on. Let's go on. Okay, now you guys, you guys hold out the on. Let's go on. Like we just scored a touchdown or something. Okay, let's go on. Okay, I just, I just, I don't want us to forget what our subject was this fall. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. We're, we're, we, we as believers, we don't need, we can forget the things behind. We don't need to stay in them because there's so much ahead of us. And everything this semester was just the, the beginning basic things to get in our toolbox so that we don't have to be stuck, but we could go on. Um, tonight, uh, we're coming to a message that this, this topic, it's, it could be the mo it's probably the most practical. There's not a lot of teaching from tonight. Um, there, there's verses, and we're going to see it, and we're going to always find the biblical basis for everything we talk about in Seesaw, which is awesome. But this is really intensely practical. I'm inclined to say that this, this topic could affect our going on more than any other topic. I will say from my experience, 100%, if I had every other topic that we've covered this semester, like spot on, mastered it, reading the Bible, mastered it, uh, here, you know, knowing the truth, prayer. But if I didn't have the one we're covering tonight, I would not be going on. I could say that assuredly, not be going on. Um, so I want to, okay, what, what if we just, what if we, we, we all read the title? Okay, let's all read that together. The big, bold title. Being built up with spiritual companions. So there, there's this topic of being built up. We sang it in the, in the song that the gates of Hades cannot prevail against the builded church. Okay? Um, but what does that mean practically? Like, how do we know the church is built? How do we know we're getting to the church that, that, the, that how do we know we're having a church experiencing in a church experience, a church life that Satan looks at and he says, you know what? I just can't prevail against this. Is it, it's like a nebulous, sometimes ambiguous things like your blob of Christ and my blob of Christ and together, like, I think there's enough blobs here tonight. Satan can't prevail. It's okay, that, that's ambiguous. Actually, this is something only believers can experience, being built up. In the world, we can experience friendships. We can experience corporations, uh, <laughs> altruistic societies, but... In, as believers, we have an opportunity to experience no, something no one else can experience, being built up. And practically, it's with spiritual companions, okay? Let's all read that, that uh, verse right under the title from 1 Peter 2.5. Great, 
okay. So Peter wrote this. That's important. First of all, this is in the book of, this is uh, Peter's first epistle. Peter wrote this. So I drew Peter right there. He's a stone. God changed his name. The Lord said, you, are, you shall be called Peter, which means stone. And he wrote these lines as living stones. The believers are being built up. We're under a process, that means, of being built up as a spiritual house. Okay, so the spiritual house, um, and it, everything we get into in the truth tonight, it's just important because we need, like, I want to use just this word vision, like, we, like a visionary. We need to see it from the word. If, if we're not, based on the truth in the Bible, what we default to, and I, I know I do, is it's an idealist, which is... Uh, you're waiting for that ideal person to be built up with. You're waiting for the ideal situation to pursue the Lord. You see someone else going on, you're like, okay, when I have what they have, then I'll, when I can do it. And uh, we, we want to be saved from idealism. We want to have be visionaries and say, Noth, you know, nothing can stop me from being built up. So, okay, Peter touches this matter of building in an awesome way. And, you know, the test, someone told me this in college, Josh, if you're being built up as a spiritual house, Josh, tell me the names of the people you're built up with. Okay, the names. So, all right, this is another stone. Another stone. Okay, one stone the devil can kick. He can just kick a stone. But there should be maybe one or two is even better at the same level as us. Maybe... I'm going to try and get it to squeak as much as, and maybe someone older, maybe someone younger. That is a good situation, okay? And that is what Peter became. And just real quick, rehash some of Peter's history. Peter was, you know, the bold, ambitious, always making mistakes, but he's our representative. And so the, right before Jesus is about to die, if you remember, he says, Lord, even if all of them especially him, deny you, I won't. Can you believe that? Like in front of the brothers, like they're like, are you serious right now? <laughs> We're right here. <laughs> Even if all of and Judas, especially, I feel like, <laughs> no. And even if all of them, I won't. Who won't? I won't. He was an individual stone. And then the Lord says something that went way over their heads. He goes, okay, well, it, just so you know, it's written. Well, he's, first of all, he says, you know, before Rooster Crows three times, you'll deny me. And he's like, okay, I won't. And then Jesus says, uh, as it is written, when the shepherd is struck, the sheep will scatter. Okay, and it's referring to the Jewish people, but they were the first followers of Jesus right then and there. And not only the whole nation of Israel, but that night, as soon as he was arrested, the sheep ran off, all the disciples, every man for himself. And, you know, Peter, Peter's, if you're not familiar, Peter had this big familiar, failure where he denied the Lord three times, even cursing. It's just like, what a, what a, what a failure and what a perfect representation of us. And, um, you know, I always wonder if Peter wasn't alone, if the, just the other brothers, Peter and John, and people are saying, hey, is G, are, were you guys with Jesus? And it's like, other brothers are with him. He's like, well, they were, <laughs> you know, at least. I might have seen him. But he just cursed and said, I don't know the man. No, no. So, okay, so this is, this is an awesome picture. In this building, when we're in a, so for the building to be practical, of course, there's millions of believers. We love the church we love Christ's body, but it has to get intensely practical where there's members of the body, their names. I can't make it without this person. If they don't go on, I can't go on. If they're not doing well, I'm not doing well. If I'm, you know, if I'm not doing well, hopefully they are and they can, we're going to get into all, all these awesome benefits of this word companion. And so just things in the building, here, here, listen to some of the benefits. When we're built in, we have the protection of the body. We have the benefits of the body. We have the enjoyment of Christ. 
and we have the expression. Actually, it's like when we're all in a room, we're like one little pixel. You can't even, like, what is, it's just blinking. Pixel. But more believers, there's more expression. You say, wow, I just see Jesus here. I see Christ here. It's like the pixels are illumining an, an image for unbelievers to see. Okay, so, all right, now I'm, we're going to talk about this word companions. Companions. Has that, raise your hand if you've heard of this word. Okay. All right. Let's all come to this word freshly. <laughs> uh, I, I know I, I, this is like a familiar word to me, probably. But anyway, let's just get into it. Okay. So this is a scriptural word, first of all. Uh, if you search it, based on, depending on what version you have, it probably comes around, up around 40 times in the Bible. Okay. Companion. And, and Brother Jose, Luis, I think maybe at the conference or something, he brought out this awesome, if you get into the etymology of companion. What? What's up? Someone say something? <laughs> Silence in the classroom. No. All right. Uh, Companion. It's like, it ha anyway, companion. I know I spelled it wrong. It's because it has like a French, it went French at some time. It's spelled like champagne. Okay. Um, but it means cone with, and then pan means like friends that, that eat bread. So it means eat, it mean eating bread, friends who you eat bread with. So you do life with. And Seesaw has this lovely, awesome, telling uh, motto, friends for life and life in Christ. Yeah. And if, anyway, that's what we're going for here. So, so this word, okay, actually, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk, tell you real quick what, what, it, what it means. But um, let me ask a question, okay. Uh, you know, some video games, you can like, any of the guys or girls played um, like sports video games and you can like create a player? Yeah. And like, I I'm shocked, Io. <laughs> and you can like, like out of 10 in every category, like passing, strength, height, agility, um, court vision. And you can put like, oh, 10, 10, you know, in every, in every category and you make like the ultimate player. And it, and it yeah, anyway, it's just like, <laughs> all right, you get <laughs> Um, so if you're creating a, the ultimate Christian, you get to create a Christian and you get to put a 10 in one category, one category, which would it be? Would it be in loving the Lord? How much? Wow. Like they have a 10 in loving the Lord. They have a 10 in hunger for the word. They have a 10 in service to the Lord and speaking Christ. Okay. Feel free to write this down. That if anyone, if you don't have a pen, I recommend you know owning a pen at some point in college. Uh, Amazon has some. Um, top the top virtue of a pursuing Christian is the top virtue of a pursuing Christian is to be built with fellow pursuers. All right, big C, big, uh, what do you call it? Anyway, um, spoiler, uh, our love fluctuates for the Lord. Our hunger, our spiritual condition, our pursuit all fluctuate. Sometimes we're a zero. Sometimes I feel like a negative number. <laughs> but if you're right here, man, you have the top virtue. You're built up with fellow pursuers. Your, your hunger is not going to stay like that forever. You're, 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 you fell, you're not going to stay on the ground forever. Your love is not going to stay abysmal. Okay, so I hope this, this begins to sink in. Okay, um, now this is what I'm going to, these next four points we're going to go over. I'm going to just tell you, this is the ac extract of this message. Um, companions are a gracious gift to us from God. Semicolon. Companions are a gracious gift to us from God. They serve as a practical entrance into God's presence, comma, sanctification, comma, spiritual recovery, comma, and the Lord's move, okay? Companions are a gracious gift to us from God. 
Okay, these are a gracious gift. They serve as a practical entrance into God's presence, sanctification, spiritual recovery, and uh, the Lord's move. Um, okay, so those four points, pre those are the four points. We'll get into these outline points. Um, and I just wanted to say quickly, um, can, I, can, I have, can I have you, Daniel? And then Jeremy, can you come up here? All right. <clears throat> Can I give you guys a microphone? No, I'm just kidding. Here. Don't worry, you won't, won't embarrass you. Um, okay, so friendship is usually, okay, this is the general base, the general distinction between friendship and companionship. They're very similar. It's just people you, companions are people you bred with, you do life together, you do normal things. But friendship, face each other, it's based on like similarities, like, hey, I have that jacket. Yeah. Hey, I have those shoes. Cool. I dress like you. Hey, I watched that show. Cool, we should be friends. I laugh at the jokes you laugh at, okay? Companions has a subtle distinction. Doing life together, but it's not face to face, it's shoulder to shoulder, okay? Common goal, okay, now let's say nothing similar. Barely anything. Uh, I'm a human being, okay, me too, okay. <laughs> Uh, I want to grow in Christ. Do you both agree? Not if you do. Okay. I'd, I'd like to have my life have meaning. Nodding. Okay. Okay, things like that. Okay, we have the basis of a companionship. Okay, thanks. You guys can sit down. And where does a companionship start? Okay, it all starts. It's not just before getting together. That verse, it starts with living stones. You can't be a dead stone. Only living stones can be to get, get together. So there's this awesome verse. Me and my, my wife, it was like one of our wedding verses. So, Song of Songs 1-4. Draw me. We will run after you. Did you catch that? Draw me. All corporate pursuits begin with an individual and personal drawing. The Lord drawing and appearing to you and attracting you. And you say, Lord, draw me. And then all that. You wake up and you, you, you contact the Lord. The Lord appears and you're like, I don't want to stay where I am. I need to pursue Christ. Guess what? You are firmly positioned to be companionized. Okay? Isn't that awesome? All right, let's, uh, all right, let's read that, that first Roman numeral uh, and then the verse under it. Where there are two or three gathered into my name, there am I in their midst. Okay, uh, this is Jesus saying this. Where there are two or three. Okay, it just takes two. Two is just one more than one. <sighs> I know. Uh, and two or the, a two, you know what a two or three is? It's a, it's a unit of victory in the Bible. The smallest unit of victory in the Bible is not one. Unless it's Christ. It's two or three. Two or three is like if you break the body of Christ down to its smallest functioning units. Something that's good for building. It's like that. Like two or three to make like a cell or like an organ. But like one is like, it's just not good. Okay, where, so Jesus says, where there are two or three gathered into my name, that means into my person. The name denotes the person. There am I in their midst. Okay, um, does that sound good? We, would we like to enjoy God's presence? I, 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 the, on, honestly, the, uh, the last period of time, there's been periods of time, last segment of time, there's been periods of time where... Sometimes just the Lord's presence is fleeting in my experience. And, and like, that's why when I was getting into this, I was like, I was like, yeah, okay, nodding. And then I'm like, wait, I am not that strong in this category of companionship. And that's, um, and I had the sense that this is a very good realization to not lie to myself. And I realized, you know, the Lord's located presence Sometimes, like, you know, we go on a break. We're going to go on a break soon. A lot of times on breaks, 
It's like, where's the Lord Jesus? <laughs> Man, read my Bible. Where is He? But when we get together with just one other believer and gather into the Lord's name intently, the Lord's presence is richly there. And this doesn't mean the, the Lord is always with us as believers. But it's like, that doesn't mean we have His presence. What I mean by that, so if, if, I, if, if uh, my dad's the president and we live in the White House, just because we share the same address doesn't mean I have my dad's presence. I don't have the president's presence. To have his presence is to eat a meal with him and be talking and smiling and joking and, hey, actually, dad, I, I want this. Okay? To, the presence of a person is uh, even, even this, this subtle, this little thing, the Lord's presence, not something to be taken for granted. And the Lord is amazing that he purposely says, you know what? I don't want you to, on your own, Sometimes it's like, I'm with you, but you find my presence in such a rich way when you gather. So the Lord says, and you notice this, it doesn't say you gather. It says, gathered into my name. That's a past tense. Past tense, gathered. That means who's initiating the gathering? God. He's gathering us into his name. If we take a little step to get together and like, like Lord, we... I need to get to Jesus. I need to get with the brothers. Uh, we'll, by faith, the Lord's presence is there. Okay. Um, you know, I think we've all had experience of gatherings, even gathering with believers, and maybe not, and you don't experience the Lord's rich presence. Um, the Bible talks about this. 1 Corinthians, don't look it up right now, but 1 Corinthians eleven seventeen says, Paul's talking to the church in Corinth, you come together for the worse. What? You come together for the worse. Um, so there wasn't much companionship there. What there was, um, the Bible uses these words, there were divisions among them, and there were parties or sects. Um, I think we can use this word, cliques. Okay? Cliques do not equal companionships. You can write that down. Cliques not equal to companionships. They are exclusive, partake of something that no one else is allowed to partake of. Uh, they are like um, a lot of times in personality. Um, but what we want, brothers and sisters, is companions that gather us into the Lord's name and have his presence. Okay, um, let's go to this second point. Let's read uh, flee and pursue together. Let's read the verse under that. Amen. This, this is so good. Flee youthful lust, but flee youthful lust and pursue. Who would, who would, uh, who would like to pursue the Lord more? Okay. Um, flee and pursue. And you know how, you know, do you know how good I am at fleeing things I shouldn't be involved with alone? <laughs> I'm not good. Not that strong at fleeing. Uh, not that enduring. Maybe for a while, but eventually alone we just get, we just get take too many blows. Ah, I give up. Not no fleeing. So, like a scale of zero to ten, just consider how, where am I in my fleeing, youthful lust right now? Like, you know, like a zero would be like, this is awesome. I, 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 I love darkness. <laughs> I don't tell me how to live. I am who I, you know, uh, my body, my choice. Uh, I, I, in regard to sin, um, brothers and sisters, none of us, none of us can flee on our own. And the fleeing has to be accompanied by pursuit. And so I, I love this, pursue righteousness. It's not just pursue, we pursue Christ with the brothers, with those who like, I'm together with, and we have a spiritual factor in our relationship. We pursue righteousness. That's to be right with God and man. With the brothers, I throw something in the trash can, part of it hits the floor and we're walking away and I'm like, oh, better be right. <laughs> and throw it away. And it's just like, man, I don't know if I would have done that by myself. Don't judge me. I'm a millennial. Okay. It was different. <laughs> Tough crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Tough crowd. 
don't joke about recycling. <laughs> um, pursue faith. Pursue the invisible things of God. Pursue substantiation of the Lord. Uh, pr pursue the Bible. There's some students, I hope, well, I hope I'm going to end, make sure we have time for people to just hear a lot of testimonies that will encourage us all. Um, love. <laughs> on, on our own, on our own who, how, can we, how long and strong can we in love mankind? Love the Lord. But with those, let's all say that, with those. With those. Those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Most of the time, I don't have a pure heart and the Lord is my witness. When I get with pure people, I'm like, wow, I'm not pure. I get with Brother Paul, we start to call on the Lord. I'm like, wow, I'm <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> I'm a man of unclean lips. Thank the Lord for the brothers and sisters. Okay? With those, um, with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. These are those who... Desperately want the Lord's presence. Okay, this, this next one, lift up one another. This is something that happens with a New Testament companion. Okay, let's read, let's read those verses, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. For if they fall, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls and does not have another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? And while a man may prevail against the one, the two will withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. <clears throat> well, first I better say, I probably, even if I was alone, I'd pick up the trash. <laughs> I just sensed something. No, just kidding. Okay, two are better than one, okay? Woe to the one who falls and does, it doesn't, the Bible doesn't say woe to the one who falls, okay? We all fall. If we haven't fallen this week, we will fall. Though the Lord allows us to fall. Otherwise, we get so proud. Woe to the one who falls and does not have another to lift him up. Woe to that man who, you know, just one fall. And there's this, this brother who has this testimony. He had the day of the college meeting for Seesaw. He fell in the morning. I mean, he, he did something. He just had a failure. The morning of the college meeting. The brother's texting him, hey, you're coming to the meeting tonight, right? He says, not tonight. I'm going to just spend some time alone. I had a big failure this morning. Probably just need to think about it. And <laughs> And the brothers immediately, they said, brother, like, you're not coming to the meeting because of a failure? Do you think the Lord's blood, like, like it's more effective after a certain amount of time? It's eternal. Hebrews 9.14 says that. The blood is eternal. It's efficacy. And that means, and of course, you know, the Lord forgets and forgives and is ready to receive us. But for some reason, our law mentality, we want to just punish ourselves. And so the brothers went to his apartment and they read the precious blood of Christ. And he said that changed his life. And he came to that meeting and enjoyed the Lord more than ever as, as a child of grace. Uh, we need a lot of experiences like that of the brothers just lifting us up like out of our stupor, out of our passivity, out of our <sighs> dragging our feet. We don't, we don't need to be there. We don't need to stay there. Uh, I've spent too long on the ground, but when we have one another lift us up, how blessed we are, okay? Um, I'm going to wrap up here in just a few minutes. I just want to, um, okay, well, let me just say, um, well, this last point. So we embolden one another to speak, okay? And I think a lot of us can experience on our own uh, sometimes we, maybe we're, we've been practicing and we can speak to others about the Lord. Speak for the Lord. This is awesome. And we should build it up and practice this. But um, often on our own, we're just like everything, we're just not, not that strong. But we are just so strengthened with just one or two more, a companion. It's almost like 
I love this verse. Okay, I didn't. Let me just read these. So Acts 4.13. And as they beheld the boldness of Peter and John. They're looking at Peter and John. And what were they beholding? They're like, dude, look how bold these guys are. Peter, like a month before that, had just denied the Lord to his face. You know? But here they were so bold, proclaiming the gospel. And the, they perceived that they were uneducated men and laymen. They marveled. And they recognized they had been with Jesus. So companions give us holy boldness to speak for Christ. And they cause us to manifest uh, the knowledge of, of Jesus, that we know him experientially to others. This is awesome. Okay, and then I love this verse. It's not on there, but Acts 3, 4. So Peter and John, they're walking to the temple, and there's this, this, this uh, uh, maybe paralytic, and he's looking at them to, to see if he, they, they could heal him. And you know what Peter and John say? I love this. This was their gospel message. Think about this. This was their gospel to that man. You think, okay, what's the way to start the gospel? Okay, do you know Jesus? Do you, okay, they were so filled with Christ, and they were so built together. Do you know what they said their gospel message was? Look at us. What? <laughs> Look at us. Like two people who are not alike. And if you read the gospel, Peter and John, Peter's like an extrovert. John is like an introvert. Peter was probably saying like the, the putting his foot in his mouth. And John is always like the camera zooms in on his face. And you know, he, <laughs> like the meme face. And he's just like rolling his eyes or something. And... And then even, you know, John, John in front of them said, Lord, can we get the, the throne on your right? Can me and my brother sit on your right and your left? And then Peter said, I love you more than them. And, but these brothers, with the Christ that was in them, they were built together to such an extent. They weren't even alike. But they could, their gospel was, look at us. And to the world, it was like, wow, Jesus Christ is God. That's amazing. Okay, so that's the kind of expression. And... Um, I just ending with this my just little story in college the first time I went to a college conference there was this other brother and we both had been like just backslidden for years but we we both got touched at the college conference and I didn't I wasn't sure if he did but I got touched and like pricked in my heart I'm like I can't let another day go by I need to take this opportunity to follow Jesus this might be the last opportunity I have other, otherwise, 10 or 20 years might go by before my next opportunity. I'm not letting this one go by. And we drive back home a few hours with a group. And, you know, we're just, of course, being cool. We're like, yeah, how was the conference? Like, yeah, it was, it was all right. It was good. You know, and trying to, like, gauge the other person. And we got to the parking lot. We were back home. And we were just, all of a sudden, at that moment, we started talking. Like, actually, you know, it was just, we just started overflowing to each other right, spontaneously how much the Lord had touched us. And we were just like, I remember I was like kicking a parking curb and I was like, uh, and the Lord was just like, say it. And I'm like, hey, feel free to say no to this, uh, but do you want to like pursue the Lord together? <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't get shut down. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> And he's like, he, of course, he said, oh, my goodness, I was trying to ask you the same thing this whole time. But I, I didn't, <laughs> you know, guys. <laughs> and, and so then we're like, oh, well, what do we do? <laughs> and so we asked uh, a brother who served on staff. And he says, brothers, get together seriously, committedly, intentionally every week and pray. And we're like, okay, pray for what? And he's like, I'm not going to tell you. Just pray. Pray until you pray yourselves into the Lord's presence and he leads you what to pray next. And so we started doing that and like we knew nothing. But every week we'd be like, he'd be like, how are you doing? He's like, uh, I, I, I'm trying to read my Bible. It's kind of hard. I don't understand a lot of stuff. And we say, okay, let's pray about that. And we pray like, Lord, help us in our Bible reading. Then we ended up bringing names to pray for. And we just, eventually we just started I, actually, at the beginning, we would just pray. We just start praying. 
to contact the Lord, get into the Lord's name. And it was like every week I brought like this filthy car to the car wash and it just got washed in the spirit. And I just felt like we felt, we both felt like new revived persons every single week. And the Lord just did so much through that prayer time. And I just want to say we were not alike. We had known each other for years, but we had never actually like had a decent conversation. Um, but that was, he was the only guy that was there in the parking lot. And the Lord was like, you can't do this on your own. So I, ho I hope, anyway, I hope at least if anything, the Lord, we wouldn't be held back by a concept. Okay, I need to find someone, same ethnicity, also from three kid family, also um, watches this show and laughs at these jokes. Um, one other believer is all it takes to be in a unit of victory in Christ's body and overthrow your campus for Christ. Um, so this is what it means. This is a little bit of being built up with spiritual companions. We have time for some sharing. Please, um, if there's anything encouraging along this line, I know the Lord has been doing things and a lot. Uh, please don't be ashamed to just share for the benefit of all of us. How does that sound? Good? Okay.